Okay, welcome back. So now let's move to the actual real war in CFD tool and smaller. Okay, it's very important. So here I'm just going to show you how to set up scenes. Later we have an advanced model and I will give you more guidelines, but this is very important. Okay, turbulence model in CFD. So the difference here is that we need a different solver. So we know that icophone doesn't doesn't have turbulence model so we need to move to new solvers but also as we are solving new equations sb skin sb solution we need to add the entries to solve those equations okay so i'm not going to go into details of all dictionaries i think right now we have a very good idea how everything is working but so far all these dictionaries remain unchanged okay nothing changed here okay these dictionaries okay need to be adapted for the turbulence case so control control d as we see in solution you need to add the new entries and also in trans transport properties there is a new entry and then we have a new dictionary and here's where you set up the turbulence model so the new entry that we're going to see is this one you need to define this transfer mo uh, model newtonian your viscosity, you need to adapt it to get. So we're going to target a range of 10,000. So you can use, you can change your viscosity, inlet velocity, dimension, it's up to you, but this is way it's just changing this one, okay? It still is in compression case. So in momentum transport here, you define your turbulence model, okay? So you have this new dictionary, you said here what you want to do, here you have functions that laminar, RAS, or less. So we go for RAS, select a turbulence model so for the moment go ahead and use this model always okay the k-omega sst is a very reliable one so i recommend you always to go for this one okay and then we have the new entries in control d so in control d we're going to use in this case pimple phone okay so see that it's pretty much the same but see that at the end pimple phone will let you use this adjustable time step like in the case of the breaking of the of the, of the multi-phase case okay so you can set a target current number and automatically delta t will be adjusted or you can just fix this one okay you disable this one it's up to you but this option is very handy okay you need to adjust your sb skin so see that these variables k and omega are and this one also are related to a turbulence model okay so you need to give some discretization skin, which, we, which by the way, what you see here is what we recommend to use, okay? That is uh, the equivalent to what you're going to find in commercial software. And then also for SB solutions, you have new variables that you need to tell open for how to solve, what linear solve is to use. So you see that you have omega, k, and, and k. So those are related to the closer equations of the turbulence model. And then here, relaxation factors, okay? So this one, you can use these standard values, or you can use it also larger. You can put it to 0 0.9. We're going to talk about more about that later. So the new variables also that we have in boundary conditions in C to are k, omega, and nu. This is related to the turbulence model, okay? You need to give boundary conditions and initial conditions to these values, and they are not coming from, from out of thin air. So there is a logic behind. I'm going to give you some basic equations how, how to compute it. But depending on the turbulence model, these values can change. And my best advice is go to, to this link. Okay, this is a very good link. And here you are going to, to find a lot of reference about turbulence model, what are your the variables that the recommended variables, and actually just to show you. Okay, let me use here. As you go to, to, to this web, web page, now turbulence model resources, maintained by NASA, it's a very good one. And see here that you have turbulence models, and as you click, for instance, here, it, it is going to give you a good description, what are the equations used, references, but also it's going to tell you how to, comp how, how to estimate the values for the boundary conditions, okay, here, and initial conditions. So every single model, they, they have a very good uh, very good reference. There are also now papers and books that you can go. So see that here, in, in this case, we recommend you to compute the value for k and omega. Now it's called k omega sst because you have two additional equations for total kinetic energy and a specific kinetic energy, okay? So you can estimate it like this, okay, k, and omega like this, and you have this table, okay, to get an Ralph, uh, a Ralph approximation uh, for <clears throat> for this variable. So, for instance, you set intensity. You can say that I want a low intensity. You put here one percent and one, and just 
put these values in these equations and you're going to get a, a relative good estimate. So most of the cases you're going to choose values between low and medium. So as, so as soon as you choose these values, you put it here and that's all, okay? So as you see, okay, there is some logic behind this one. So there are different equations. So these are rough estimates, okay? But they need to be, uh, they, they need to have some sense, okay? It's not like you are going to put a negative value because it's not going to work. Okay, so these rough estimates that we're putting here were computed using uh, a velocity of 1% and the turbulence intensity equal to, to, to 1, okay? The inlet velocity is 1 and, and turbulence intensity equal to 1, okay? So you set up turbulence intensity 1 and use uh, a viscosity rate of 1 and then you estimate those values, okay? So that is the only difference, okay? You need to give the, those new variables and now also we can compute the y plus value. So y plus, remember that needs to be a wall. So we're going to see that. And in the output screen, you will see that we're going to solve some new equations and you get more information, okay? So let's move uh, and take a look at this case, which was C14, if I would recall. So let me, let me go back. C14, yes. So as you are in C14, you can just take a look at the file. So pretty much every, everything is the same. So see that in constant, you have this new dictionary related to the turbulence model. So remember, you misspell something here, it's going to give you all the options, but also you have full and info, and you can explore there what is going on. So as you go in zero, see it's here that I have a backup file. So probably you can do use this in the set fields method. So the new variables here are k, nut, and omega, and this is related to the turbulence model. So see that these values, these numbers that you have here, they are estimated using those those equations, relations I show you, okay? So this is, you can take this setup, it's always the same, okay? So when you have walls, so remember, when you have walls, you can enable wall functions, so see here, this is how you set up for wall functions, for omega, for nut, and for k. So this is a copy and paste. At inlets, you need to give an inlet value and then the outlet will be a zero gradient or use the inlet outlet. The rest remain the same. So here you can also update it to symmetry. And here when you see calculated, it means that this value, nut, is computed from k and omega. Okay, so actually nut comes from this. Okay, it's the ratio between this one. So you just put calculated and you just will do a, a mathematical operation to get that value. We're going to see that later, okay? So in outlets and inlets, it's almost calculated. At the walls, you put this one. And this is a, what is called a Y plus insensitive treatment. So it doesn't matter the Y plus, you, this one will always work well. So as you go into control date, and later we're going to, so probably if you are new to CFD, you are wondering what is Y plus, we're going to see that later. It's a very important quantity in turbulence model. So see that pretty much the same. Okay, here you can control your tanks using that. So you can say, okay, I want a CFL of 10. Okay, so it's up to you. For this case, let, let, I will leave it 0 0.9 just to get good stability. So the standard function objects, in, out, mass flow. So see that for instance, compute additional fields. So this is a new one. So use fun info and see what is this about. Compute the average, okay? Forces, forces. And this is Y plus, okay? So this is a quantity that we can visualize. We're going to see how to do that. And minimum and maximum values. So as you go now into SB skin, SB solution, you just have new entries corresponding to the new equations that you are solving. Okay, that's all. So in this case, and actually this slice needs to be updated, okay? So this is the method that we're using, okay? With this looping, okay, two, two, one, we'll read this out roughly what, what, what we're talking there. And how you solve for k omega, your new variables. So that's all, how you set up a turbulent, a turbulent case. So let's run this case, run solver, off you go. Okay, so let me open a new window just to show you a few things. Uh, whoop. So if I open the log file, see that at the beginning, it's telling you that, giving some information, okay? And then it's telling you that you are using a RAS model, in particular the K-omega SST, the default coefficients, you can change it, and then it start to compute. And see that as it's running, it's computing here. 
your new variables, okay, k and omega. And here you have the minimum and maximum, okay, so p, k, omega, so you can change you can check the stability. Something important about this turbulent, turbulence quantity is that they are strictly positive bounded. They need to be always positive. So this is also important when you check minimum and ma maximum values. You should be careful that these quantities are positive. They can become, from time to time, they might become negative, but needs to be a small value. It's stuff like 0 0.001, okay, minus 0 0.01, stuff like that. But if you see that they become minus 10, that is a problem, okay? So NUT, this is the viscosity, turbulent viscosity. This is a new ingredient that we're adding. Besides molecular viscosity, you are adding an extra factor, okay? So see that it's relative large, okay? So as you compare with your molecular viscosity, it's large. So this is the one that is going to add, take that correction for the for the turbulence effects so the solver runs fine i can go for instance uh, i can use python plot washer log solver so let's take a look our, our residuals and see that now besides u and and P, we have also residuals for the new variables, K and omega. So the, the, the solution here, what is going to happen is exactly the same as the previous case at Reynolds 200. Here, in one point, they're going to go up and then you're going to have the oscillations, okay? So this is a fully unsteady problem. So do not expect that these residuals are going to go all down, okay? They weren't going to stay like this. So that's why it is better to sometimes take a look at the forces. So you have there this grid and see that this is what we have. Okay, so you have your residuals and your forces and see that it's already starting to CL show some oscillation. So see that it's a very different behavior from the previous one. Okay, so obviously you now we, we increase our Reynolds number. And in one point here CD also should start to to os oscillate. So I will let uh, this simulation run a little bit, of, so it will run, let's see, 500 seconds, okay? So I will let it run and see you at the end of the simulation. I will put here my also my monitors, so I'll see you at the end of the simulation. Okay, look at that, the solver is still running and see that at this point, we already start to see also the oscillations in, in CD. So remember that you can change parameters while the solver is running. So in theory, every single file that you have, you can change it. So this is one you can change viscosity, turbulence model, be careful, okay? Sometimes it will crash as you change some of the stuff, but most of the time you are just interested in changing, for instance, the time step or this value here. So let's say that we go from uh, could a number of 0, 09. So let me increase that could a number and let me say that I want a could a number now of 5. Okay, so automatically open phone will adjust my time step to reach that could a number. Okay, so see that there it is increasing slowly. Sometimes it might not reach that maximum value because in this case, okay, we have, oops, sorry, I put. 50 that that was too much okay let me put five so i exaggerate a little bit so it is scaling okay and see that it cannot go higher because i have the limit on delta t so see that i say that my delta t cannot be larger than, than zero one so you can increase it here okay and now also it should should increase okay so now it goes to five larger times so it means also larger now outcomes, uh, faster outcomes. However, you might have a stability problems. So see that every time that I change something, you see that reflected in the residuals. Again, it's not indication that it's diverging, it's different time steps, okay, that you, you, in this case, we're using, so initial residuals will be very different. So everything will be reflected here. And also it will be reflected 
in your in, in, in your quantity of interest. So in this case, you don't see much, but it is reflected. And see that what, what I mentioned is important that the, you need to monitor these quantities because they are strictly bounded. They are strictly positive bounded. So here is giving you minimum and maximum value. So when you see that this window opens, means that at one point is becoming negative it's becoming unbounded so if you check your windows and let's see here see that k is becoming negative an open form will, will, will do this one but it will try to bound it bound it meaning that it will make it equal to zero okay to avoid this one because that this can give you some some, some problems okay so this is a, a numerical trick basically okay to avoid the variance but see that the value is very slow, very small. It's not a problem. But it may happen that this value can become like minus 10, and that is a problem. So you should always monitor for that situation. And you saw here that that happens when we increase the time step. Okay, so see that while you run faster, you might be adding some other instability, something that will affect your solution. Okay, so likely you go back, you reduce your time step so to the starting 101. K will become bounded and see here that it's becoming in fact bounded okay another trick that you can do is okay and let me go here and put here 0 10 and 5 okay so I increase the CFL okay a very large time set and see that it's becoming unbounded again okay a large CFL number Okay, some people have problem running with that CFL number. You see here that I'm changing and there is no problem. So see, every time that I change the CFL number, you see that you see that you see that reflected always, you know, in continuities, errors, residuals, and also in monitoring quantities. Okay, so what I want to show you that, for instance, here it is unbounded. So one trick, and see that it's starting to to, to accumulate, to increase. One trick that. We saw that you can reduce back your, your delta t, but also you can change your numerical method. So you're using linear wind that is known to be a little bit unbounded. So you can go and use instead a wind. A wind is very bounded, a little bit diffusive, but it's very bounded. Okay. So when it comes to the turbulence variables, you can use a wind with no problem. However, never use a wind for divergence of velocity. Never, because it's too diffusive. Okay. So in numeric, when we address the numeric, we're going to see that, but never use it here for the turbulence quantities. It is okay. So see that we change it to a win and become and became bounded. Okay. And that change in the numerical method is also reflected here. So see that we see it reflected. Okay. So I can go back again. So let me go here, uh, control D. Okay, so I go to the starting one and I will leave it up win. Okay, so I change it. See that you have a jump here. Okay, the forces and see that now here you are reducing your time step. So that is going to give you better accuracy. And you start to see here that these are changing. Okay, and here you have also your residuals going down. So everything is going is. It's going fine. So it's always monitor the solution. And well, clearly you see here now that Bentos now is printing, printing minimum and maximum values of those quantities. Also, just to show you in control D, now I usually I put this minimum and maximum at the end. So remember though. So maybe you are using different variables. So you will need to update this. So you have four scalars and vector. So you sort of vector is your velocity. And then here you put all your, your scalars that you want to monitor. Again, you can also modify this on the fly while you are running. You can modify these files. So I will let it run the solver or probably let me say that, let's see what, what point we are. Okay. So I can say that, okay, we already re reached 500 seconds. So <laughs> it will stop. So see what happened here that it went down using a winding. Uh, a win, uh, a win, sorry, for the turning variable. So see that this is no good. Okay, so these are the stuff that you always should be careful. You should always monitor. But at this point, we we have a solution, and let's do the post processing. So let me close everything, and let me launch Paraffin. And 
intelligence you look at this screen see that it's reporting y plus see that it's telling you minimum maximum and average value and this is a very important quantity that you will see at the walls okay so the just a reminder that you need to go into constant polymesh boundary when you define your boundary conditions okay that needs to be a wall okay the y plus is only computed at walls and actually y plus and forces are computed only at walls so put here and you have velocity you can access all the fields because also we have a solution for the turbulence quantities okay so k the turbulent kinetic energy so basically it's telling you that it is increasing the viscosity here okay so this is the turbulence model okay you have also omega and then you have new that is what we're interested in, okay so see that where you have the values different for from zero is where the turbulence model is kicking in as suspected in the wake you are going to to, to to expect that there the turbulence model is working a lot also close to the walls the turbulence model should be doing not something because there we probably in this case we, we we have a turbulent boundary layer so there the turbulence model should be kicking in a little bit okay so this is the idea of turbulence modeling okay so we have also mean quantity so see that pressure mean velocity mean values but interesting that i want to show you is this one y plus value so I want the Y plus is just you can only visualize that at wall. So I want to visualize only the wall. And see here that you have it here. So this Y plus value should be, let's say for you for the moment that we're having addressed torrents model in details, should be containing between if you are using the K omega ST model, okay? So these are the recommendations for this turbulence model. Should be between, let's say, anywhere between one and five hundred. Okay. Should be contained there. So see that in this case we have something, okay, between let's say ten and one. So this is okay. So if you have very large values here, it might be a problem. Okay. But this guideline will apply only for the K omega ST. Later we're going to see that different turbulence models will have different requirements. But let's say that the most general turbulence model is the K omega SST. As I said at the beginning, I recommend you to always go for this turbulence model and there you have the setup. Okay. It's just a copy and paste. You only need to change the name of the patches. Okay, so let me close here. So that was all for this case. So just introduce you a little bit how things are done when you are doing turbulence model and also introduce you a new solver pimple phone and this is the solver i always recommend you to use okay so forget about so about icophone go and use pimple phone so that's all for this case thank you for your attention see you in the next and final video okay for this module one bye